record. Yeah, it's being recorded. Perfect. Um, awesome. So thank you everyone for, for joining uh, this live webinar with, uh, with LeadSift and, uh, and Mike from, from Simplify. So today's webinar topic, as, as, you, as you know, is, is we're gonna talk about how a B2B marketer or a B2B company can successfully run, run ad campaigns that stand out and convert. Um, I have here with me Mike, who's the Director of Digital Marketing from, from Simplify. Hey Mike. As you can. Uh, hi everybody. You? Awesome, cool. So, so just in terms of a few housekeeping items. Um, so what we'll try to do is uh, for, the, for, for, the, for our webinar today, we'll try to keep it under 30 minutes. Do not want to drag it long on, on a Friday afternoon and, and, and bore too many people. Um, if it goes a little longer, depending on the Q and A, we, we'll, we'll keep it, keep going. Um, the other thing that we'll do is uh, this webinar is being recorded. So in case, you know, someone missed it or uh, if you want to look back upon uh, the discussions we had, what we'll do is um, we'll record it and we'll embed it in, in the same landing page where you signed up. So, so you can go back and, and look into it. Um, so yeah, just wanted to clarify that. So without further ado, um, let's get started. I think what will be useful, Mike, is if you if want to, get started with a quick introduction. Mike, if you want to give uh, everyone, the, the audience, uh, a quick introduction about yourself and, and, and what yeah. you do, and, and then we can get started. For sure. So I work for Simplify, and we, uh, we make security uh, or operations easy for security operation centers. So uh, if you're a large organization, you have a lot of complex tools helping to keep your network safe. We're essentially doing what Marketo did for the marketing industry uh, for the security industry. So we're like the, uh, the, the operating system of the security orchestration center. And I take care of all of the digital marketing and marketing operations for Simplify. Awesome. Cool. And, and, and that's great because most of the audience uh, or a lot of the audience, I think, Mike, are... Uh, marketing operations and, and digital marketing. So I think your, your experience will be super relevant. And just for everyone, my name is Tukan. I am the CEO and co-founder at Leadsift. Um, for people that do not know what Leadsift does, it's a sales intelligence platform that helps other B2B technology companies you know, move their pipeline faster using behavioral intent data. So enough about that. So let's, let's get started in, you know, on our topic. Mike, one of the first things that I love to hear from you is, you know, as a B2B marketer, um, one thing that we hear a lot from our prospects and existing customers is, you know, we, we do different kind of uh, customer acquisition strategies. One of them is paid media, but what are the different channels that a B2B marketer has that they can use uh, from a customer acquisition or brand awareness, what have you? Uh, so I can speak to the ones that we use, but um, you know, in general, we have uh, our display campaign. So that's like, uh, all of the ad networks, uh, as well as the social media networks. So I actually group those in together. Uh, we have uh, search, so paid search, and mainly just Google AdWords. Uh, we dabble in some video uh, from a, a paid point of view. And then it gets a little bit interesting when you talk about uh, the customer acquisition, uh, where we're starting to dabble into the native content uh, like native advertising, syndicated content, and then some affiliate, uh, some affiliate advertising. Hmm. So one, I guess one question, and it, it probably would depend on company to company. Mike, are there in in your case, have you seen? Is there one channel that works better than others in terms of conversion or you know, cost per acquisition? Is there a difference? I mean, Google AdWords all the way. Google organic all the way, but like there's, there's yeah. really nothing that beats uh, in terms of uh, bottom of funnel converting people finally into, uh, you know, interested uh, people, MQLs and then SQLs, you know, all of the data suggests that Google still does dominate that last step. Now they all have a role and they all, you know, I, I think contribute, um, but if you're going to do one and you're going to do one first, it's, it's definitely you want to get out onto the Google ad and Google display network. Got it. And 
currently, are you buying the Google ads natively, just using Google ad, ad, AdWords console, or are you using any platform, Mike? How do you do we, that? I've always bought directly uh, in, in Google ads. So the, there's two different things. There's the display mm -hmm. network, and then there's the ad network. Mm -hmm. so Display network, you have to buy directly through their, uh, sorry, the display network you can buy uh, through third parties. And we do a little bit of that through AdRoll, but we do also buy directly on their uh, display network. And then all the search, uh, paid search, we do directly from their platform. Got it. And in terms of, and I think you, you briefly mentioned about different social networks, meaning the, the obvious ones coming in, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn and, and, and Twitter maybe, or Instagram, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on those as, as paid channels from a B2B marketing perspective? They, uh, they have their secrets and I will tell you some of them okay. uh, further down. Perfect. That, 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 that sounds, sounds good. Okay. Um, one thing I, I should have mentioned is I know in the agenda, there is a Q and a section that we'll, we'll have at the end. But uh, because we have Alex who's moderating the Q&A, if someone in any of the live audience, if you have any questions that's pertaining to what we are discussing, please feel free to put it in the Q&A section and, and, and then Alex will try to you know, triage through it and, and then we can discuss it in real time. So feel free to, you know, to post questions as, you, as, you, as we go through the webinar. So now that we have talked about the different pay channels, um, one thing that I'd like to hear your thoughts on is the importance of ad copy. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell a little story here. One of the things uh, back in the day, this was probably three, four years ago, when we were selling you know, behavioral intent from consumer facing companies. So we used to work with large you know, consumer Fortune 500 companies. Um, and one thing that I heard that their digital ad strategists and their, their agencies used to tell us was targeting is great, but probably at the actual copy of the ad is equally important, if not sometimes more important. Um, so that's on the B2C side of things. What do you think about it in, in the B2B side of things, uh, Mike? So I'm gonna make this, uh, I'll make this a little bit interesting and, sure. uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you like a bit of a click, clickbaity uh, sound by here. And I'll say, <laughs> Done. I'll say ad copy, probably not that important. And uh, let, me, let me justify that for you. So. Okay. If you, if you think about all the things you can do with your time and like sort of return on investment uh, for your time, yep. uh, pouring over ad copy is probably not the best thing uh, to do. So, I mean, I, I'm talking to marketers. I think we all know, you know, how to, uh, you know, write in the English language. I think generally your, your, your okay effort is good enough to get ad copy. That is okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's other things to consider, which is like the design of the ad. So if we're talking about the written word, hmm. I mean, if you're trying to sell uh, intent data and you say, hey, I'm selling, you know, uh, uh, plush uh, stuffed animals, you're probably not in the right line of work. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> but I think the, the design of it and then the context matters much, much more, right? So... Um, you know, are you hitting people with the right message at the right uh, stage, right? So for instance, if I'm interested in intent data, if someone serves me an ad that says, hey, do you want intent data? I mean, that's, that's really matching the ad copy to yeah. my phase in the funnel. And that's what's important. Mm -hmm. rather, than, rather than worrying about your call to action saying like, hey, get this resource or download this resource. I, I've found it doesn't matter as much as context and design. Do you do, do you do a lot of AB testing on your ad copy, uh, Mike, to see, you know, what call to action converts are, it's typically the similar thing. Uh, we do more AB testing on design and copy. So we never really treat copy uh, as an isolated entity. So we wouldn't take the same ad mm. and write, and write, uh, you know, uh, get versus download, right? Like, I wouldn't A/B test that, but I might A/B test like oh. completely different messages. Okay. Interestingly enough, I do tend to do. Uh, we actually moved off of HubSpot earlier this year, and we used to test out, uh, use their CTA to test out uh, A/B test CTAs. You could get a little bit of a bump in your conversion rate there, but by and large, you know, 
uh, instead of uh, messing with the ad copy in one of your particular ads, mm -hmm. apologies, instead of messing with your ad copy, um, we would just iterate through more campaigns because most organizations are quite complex. So huh. rolling out a new type of campaign to a new spot in the funnel is probably going to tell you a lot more about your marketing uh, funnel than changing some words. Okay, let me ask you this question because we have heard this from one of our clients who was trying to do this. Is and this I don't know if, if this would work on Google, but something like this on a LinkedIn or or those kind of platforms is if you are targeting, let's say, you know, Pepsi, the digital marketer or head of security, um, CISO within within Pepsi, would would if and if you're running some kind of a personalized ad, so let's say you want to show an ad and you say, hey, can check out check out how Simplify can help Pepsi's security threat or you know vulnerability or something like that. Do you think that might work when it's which more tailored towards them, the copy? Um, yeah, so we, uh, so we have dabbled in, huh. uh, you know, dynamic ads. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'll say my experience here isn't that great. Right. Um, yes, I think you can get a, a bit of a bump, but for mm -hmm. the most part, like, because we're so niche, we tend mm -hmm. not to, you know, th that might, that might be relevant if you're serving to a hundred thousand people. Mm. Got so, it. We're on average serving from anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 to maybe 20,000 people in any given campaign. Got it. Okay. That's, that's, that's great. Um, so moving on to the next item that we have here, uh, like this is, this is going to be an interesting one is, so you have your buyers who are in the different stages of the journey who are, you know, more top of the funnel, middle consideration and, and, and those things. How do you go about, targeting your buyers across this journey. And what I mean by this is, you know, can, if you can talk about, do you create different kind of content for them, different kind of copy for them, different kind of channel ad channels for them? Yeah, I can, I can yeah. I'll give you a super, super tactical answer here. Love it. I think the traditional way of thinking about this is sort of like top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, more like top of funnel is more like pain point related, middle of funnel might be more product related and bottom yep. of funnel is more like company related, right? Yep. We actually take a little bit more of like an actionable and tactical approach to the types of campaigns that we run and it's not necessarily a division, like okay, you're in this and then you're in this and then you're in this. So we actually run like branding and air coverage campaigns uh, like all throughout the funnel and we will run these at uh, at interval. So let's say for instance, you've never engaged with us. Hmm. We might, you know, for a two week period, maybe twice or three times a year, drop you into one of these campaigns and just try and, and, you know, uh, get you to recall, uh, who simplify is. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is good for things like, you know, surrounding, uh, big events. We've got RSA coming up in, uh, March. So okay. probably two weeks prior to RSA, we'll start running out ads to people that uh, uh, have potentially indicated that they're going to RSA. Mm -hmm. We have uh, acquisition programs, and these are um, these are like just trying to get people cookied, right? Uh, and and normally to do that, you have to give away something for free. So like a uh, some sort of download, some PDF, uh, you know, some uh, at least a video. The whole point is you just want them on your website. You do not want to get your content and you want to get your cookie on their, their browser so that you can serve to them all, uh, all over. Mm -hmm. And I find the platforms that really work well for yeah. this, is like the native advertising on like Taboola uh, and I've used Outbrain before. Mm. Uh, we use, uh, and, and actually the, the one that's really killer here is uh, the display network, uh, Google display network but huh. specifically keyword targeted display ads. So for huh. instance, we want, we want to target people who are in the security operations center and are talking about things to do with security operations. The fact that we can target our ads around uh, that, like, like security operations content is very, very effective mm. for us acquiring people. Huh. And then uh, we use conversion campaigns. So once we've acquired uh, someone, and by acquired, I mean cookie them. Yeah. 
uh, we would actually uh, run out uh, campaigns that, that try to get your email address, essentially. Um, and mm -hmm. normally we use like high value content for that. So like the Gartner uh, guides, uh, some things along those lines, right? Things that, you know, we have to pay anywhere from like 20 to 50,000 for. Uh, so we tend to do that through more like syndicated content channels, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, like uh, tech target we've been, we've been using a little bit of, mm -hmm. we'll do, you know, any, any time we have you cookie, then we can just follow you across, you know, on an yeah. ad display on Google display. And then we've tried uh, some YouTube ads, which, which we're, we're looking at doing a, a lot more of, uh, when we get some better video, video talent. So, huh. So we have, go ahead. So that, that's interesting. You mentioned YouTube ads. I've never heard B2B companies do B2B ad targeting uh, on, uh, not sorry, not B2B ad targeting on YouTube. How, how are you guys targeting that? Like, what is the parameter that you're targeting? Is it just retargeting them once they have cookie? Yep. That's, uh, right. that's part of it. So you can, you can retarget on, on YouTube and that's, uh, that has been 90% uh, of what we've been doing. Uh, you can also build in, in AdWords, uh, and, and, and display, you can build in, um, CRM audiences, mm -hmm. uh, which my experience is the hit rate hasn't been terribly high on, on Google, but, um, you know, worth a, worth a shot for sure. Got it. Got it. And let me ask you this then. Um, do you also do any of this, you know, different kind of ad once you cookie a user, can you Cook, use that same cookie to retarget them on Facebook or LinkedIn or other channels? Uh, yes and no. So okay. each one of these channels, it, it, the answer is yes, we currently have, we don't have the, the technology implemented. So there's pieces, pieces of technology that you can use. We uh, always use the email as a, as a, uh, as a match, uh, a piece of match data. So, uh, if we can get them onto our website mm -hmm. on a page that has the Facebook pixel, that has the, the LinkedIn pixel, that has the Google pixel, mm -hmm. it's very easy to do it. But um, until you get them on that page, you have no ability to, to use any other cookie to, to target them on those networks. Got it. You mentioned you, you use the email to match. And are you talking about more on the custom audience side of things? For which platform? Uh, for Facebook, LinkedIn, or even Google does custom audience. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. We, so we actually drop people. So we're on Marketo now and we drop people into smart lists, mm. uh, which synchronize over to each one of the platforms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they'll take, you know, anywhere from say 24 to 48 hours to see if they can match against email. And while you don't have the cookie, you can still try and, and serve ads to them. And that's actually the, 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 the piece that allows us to use the uh, uh, leads synced over from the user intent. Got it. Got it. So I'm going to come to that. That's, that's very interesting. So you mentioned Marketo natively allows you to, to do this matching across Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google to target them using email. Yeah, it's more actually about yeah. the platform. So a platform like AdRoll will have like a Marketo connector that has a hotspot connector. Uh, you know, other platforms like uh, Facebook has a, has a really good connector over AdBridge. And actually other ones, we use a little bit of hodgepodge and magic to synchronize lists over to. So uh, hmm. right now getting them into Google automatically is not uh, as, as cut and dry, but we're getting there. Nice. So one question I, I have is, and when we talk about to customers, they talk about campaigns and you mentioned campaigns at any given time, Mike, how many campaigns would you be running or a B2 like you would be running? Yeah. Should I ask you that? A lot. A lot. Yeah, we run. Uh, so we actually have two, two other campaign types, one being like a, like nurturing campaigns and then accelerator campaigns. Mm -hmm. So we have, we run five different types of campaigns across the funnel. Um, and I would say we had to have at least 50 campaigns running right now for a number of different reasons. Right. Wow. Yeah. So you that's why I said, that's why I said, focus less on ad copy, focus <laughs> more on rolling out the right campaign to the right people. And, and when, when you're doing the campaign, the, would you say to run a successful campaign, would the key be segmenting the audience in each of these campaigns? Would that be one of the key things? 
So we actually, interestingly enough, we have a, uh, a campaign, an a, a, a acquisition campaign that, that helps us do that. So we serve two different verticals, okay. one being MSSPs, so like um, uh, managed security service providers, and one being like enterprise, like yep. Fortune 500 yep. company. Yep. When we don't know who uh, who you are, if you're an MSSP or a, a, an enterprise, yep. we'll actually serve both sets of ads to you. And okay. if you click on the MSSP, just by you know using that intent data by saying, if someone oh. clicks on that MSSP ad, they're likely an MSSP. So we'll drop you into an MSSP conversion. Program. Ah, got it, got yeah. it. Huh? That's 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 ve that's very interesting. Um, so there is this, and I have to ask this: Is do you guys do any kind of account-based targeting in, in your ad ad targeting play? Yes, uh, absolutely. We are uh, so so. We don't use one of the the platforms mm -hmm. uh, like Terminus. I have used yeah. Terminus before. Mm -hmm. So our our account based targeting strategy uh, goes a little bit bit more like following. Okay. So we um, we have our list of target accounts. We have a, a a goal of how many people we want to acquire at those accounts. So we need a, a certain number of people cookie. So we use lead sift to help us generate leads in from those accounts. We also use uh, as many other sources we can. Mm -hmm. uh, some I'll tell you about some I won't, but like ranking for one is, is really, really effective in the, uh, in the it uh, space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but any way that we can get an email, we will try to get an email. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there's a little bit of work on LinkedIn that's happening, but uh, <laughs> fair. Well, gray area. And, 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 and then, so once you get this, uh, well, that's actually, actually, yeah, let me, let me, let me move to the next question. It's a good segue is you mentioned how you would use a tool like LeadSev to get this intent uh, on target accounts or, or companies showing, um, you know, buying signals. What's the flow there, Mike? How, how would you use this when LeadSev tells, you know, these are the companies showing intent about a competitor or industry topic, or maybe even an event. I don't know if you're leveraging LeadSev to target RSA, for example, people likely to go, uh, when you, when you get that, how would you execute that data? Yeah, so um, I think talking about this uh, uh, from a just a paid ads point yep. of view is probably like, I, I think intent data wouldn't be effective if you only used it for paid media. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I think the interesting thing about intent data and in, like intent leads mm -hmm. are that like they're already... Uh, they're already up the ADA curve, right? You know they're already interested. You know the, that they may or may not have desire, but what you don't have yet, which is normally the first thing that you get from people, is yeah. a, their attention, right? Yep. So that's why intent data is so effective to use with paid media because all you have to do then is get their attention. Amazing. So the what, what we actually do... Uh, you know, we do a lot more than, than just the paid media. Like when they come in uh, from lead sift, we actually score them, you know, depending on why they're being synchronized from lead sift, we'll score them variably. Uh, we'll, you know, through Marketo, we'll use the uh, interesting moments and alert uh, the reps if say some of their high value or target accounts are, are starting to, uh, you know, show some intent data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, then like if, if we've never seen them before, that's when we synchronize them to one of our branding campaigns for huh. maybe a period of two weeks. And they, they sort of, they enter in that mouse trap then. So they, they'll continue to cycle through, you know, two weeks on, three months off, you know, two weeks on, one month off, right? Yeah. Uh, and what we're trying to do there is just sort of, you know, get us in the back of their mind because, you know, we, we are, we're a pretty niche company yeah. Uh, it's not, it's not unreasonable to think that we could probably serve our ads, you know, 50 times to almost every single person in our industry without, uh, spending millions of dollars. Right. Mm. No, that's that, uh, that was one of my questions is how do you know that, you know, you have maxed out an audience, meaning like, when do you stop targeting that user? Is there something like that or can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> until they convert, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, until, I mean, we certainly have people, uh, at, like we use um, uh, uh, like data, and actually, interestingly enough, uh, Sri Jada sent a, 
sent something that said that you guys can now identify when people leave organizations. Yep. It's actually super effective. But for the most part, um, you know, you, you, because someone leaves an organization, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't want to uh, yeah. market to them. Yeah. Um, and it, if like whether or not they like max out and don't want to hear from us again, I mean, that's, that's, that's more of Google's problem than, uh, than anyone else. Uh, you know, they, they have the ability to stop our ads from showing up. Yeah. Uh, you know, they can use ad blockers, but like it doesn't really change how I behave. Now we try to uh, ad abide by the do no harm, but um, in general, we'll keep you in our marketing funnel so long as, yeah. uh, so long yeah. as you will. No, that's, that's great. One, one quick question I, I uh, want to ask is, what about mobile when, when cooking them is, is, a, is a challenge? What, what, how does that work? Well, I mean, you're, you get, so Google does their best to, uh, join those two. Mm. Uh, we, we, we use segment to also try and, uh, join those two and give people a, what, like one centralized unique ID. Mm. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things. It just sort of is what it is in certain plat, like on certain platforms, uh, mobile versus desktop is, uh, problematic, but on others, it, it just simply isn't right. So for instance, some of our more effective campaigns are the, um, are the acquisition campaigns where we're serving around serving display ads around keywords that works on mobile or, um, or desktop. Right? Mm -hmm. But would you like, this is what I think is from a search perspective, if someone searches 